Okay. Okay, hi everybody. I have enough people from, from Dell here to make it look like we have a lot of people, by the way. <laughs> um, this should be just a conversation, and we just wanted to take the time to talk a little bit about some of the technology and innovation we've been doing. So I'm the CTO for AI, computer networking at Dell. We, I have been engaged in OCP for a very long time. I was also involved in TIP and a big support of open source for everything software, hardware, and creating open standards to scale all the innovation. Uh, for the last two years, over two years ago, we started to look at HPC and where HPC is gonna go. As you know enough about Dell, HPC for us has been, I wanna say a side job. You know, we have a lot of good HPC customers, but we didn't build the big custom systems that some of other HPC customers did. And we thought the best way to do it if we were to get into the HPC game is to go with a complete open standard model based on OCP. What happened though is that AI showed up and sped up significantly. So we have been working on AI also for two or three years. And what we see now is AI and HPC both coming together with a speed of innovation and scale unlike anything we, anybody has ever seen before as everybody knows. Um, so what I wanna talk about today is what we built for HPC and AI and how we see that world evolving. Um, and obviously it's a conversation so I'll take a few questions you know, within whatever time I have. Um, the challenges we've been solving, same challenges for HPC as it's AI and now we see the two worlds are coming together just different workloads, is that people want higher performance, they do want consolidation of all the system, it's become a system architecture, it's no longer a server, a switch, a storage device, it's become a system, and then it's all about power and cooling, the most important metric is performance per watt, you know, how much performance you can give me for the, for the amount of power, and then how can you cool it, um, and in terms of cooling, people talk about things called data center neutral, which means bring your infrastructure to the data center, but I can't buy chillers. I can't do anything because it will take months, years to get all that supply chain and be able to do it. Um, some of the metrics here are all marketing metrics, so I'm not gonna talk about them. I think everybody knows that the most important thing is what's in the middle is that we see that 44% growth in infrastructure, specifically for AI infrastructure spend, which will get to 422 billion. That is very significant. In many technology cycles we've had, we've seen maybe the first couple of years, you get 50%, 60, and then it goes down to 10. It's very much expected that AI infrastructure will continue to grow at very high double digit here for many years to come. We've seen pieces of it so far today, which is the big training clusters. It's moving to inferencing, and we haven't even seen it go completely all the way to the edge. These are the things that are starting to happen and people are starting to deploy. So this is gonna be a continued evolution. What we focused on and what we are launching, today is the first time we talk about this product, so you know, you. It has been embargoed before that. We have built an OCP-based to act scale computer architecture for AI and HPC. Um, again, this is something we've been working on with a couple of years, and we have worked with multiple big customers on it, but now it is public, and that's what we talk about. So just like we have our servers, now we have act level OCP standard based. Uh, we do, we've decided to go based on uh, two, two sets of sizing, 44OU and 50OU. Uh, we are working very hard on the power density. Currently we support 33 kW power shelves, but I was talking to John Jenny here and some of the others. We really want some of the higher density power shelves that you have out there as soon as we can get it because the demand is for that. Um, we also have updated the whole architecture, and I'm gonna talk about liquid cooling and everything we're designing for liquid cooling. 
to support multiple generations of chip coming up. Uh, the most important stat on this chart is that we're designing this thing for 480 kW. And we're already shipping over 100 kW today. Early next year, we'll be shipping over 200 kW in the hack, but we're designing it for 480 kW. When you think about it, that's like the power of a, a small data center just a couple of years ago, or maybe right now. Um, and we see a path way beyond that. So everything is based on OCP specs or V3. The, the sleds inside, as much as possible, we're using DCMHS, which we announced here for the CPU side, and then looking to continue to standardize more of the components in that, in that rack. One of the products based on it is also something we, we are announcing today, which is our XE9712, which is our GB200 rack. So putting in practice what I talked about before, taking GB200 and putting it on an v 3 spec, that what we just announced, it, it took a lot of engineering work, a lot of design work, lots of collaboration with NVIDIA and multiple other partners, but we are delivering GB200 in the same v 3 form factor which means we can innovate significantly and scale it as we go. These are all the specs. It's all liquid cooled. It supports NVLink. It's NVL 72 by one. Um, we are able to support different IO and different NICs DPUs as we build it for specific customers. And we are planning to continue to innovate on this for future chipsets beyond GB200 and we'll talk about them as they become available. But the fact that we're using ORV3 with the power to go to 480 kW make this future proof. So we will be able, we already know enough about the future roadmap with multiple chip vendors, and we see that this will continue to be able to be usable through 26 and hopefully beyond. But the way silicon has been, the roadmap has been changing and accelerating I think it's hard to predict the future, but at least we're predicting as much as possible to make this a future-proof architecture, not just for GB200, but multiple chips to go after. Also, because it is based on OCP open specs, this will support other chipsets like AMD and many more. We're working with many other chip companies. We want to be able to make sure that it, su it, support it supports the full silicon diversity. Liquid cooling, everybody talks about it. Everybody knows how important it is. We have been doing liquid cooling for many, many years. We have many large deployments with customers with liquid cooling. We have been innovating significantly with liquid cooling. And with, with this new act design, we're integrating liquid cooling with OCP specs into it to enable an open and scalable ecosystem. So some of the key components here and there's more, a lot more than that. We have maybe 25, 26 different design projects and innovation of liquid cooling. But some of the three I would talk about is the uh, cold plates and cold plate loops in, integrated into our servers. We're designing these for much significantly higher watts, you know, sh chip watts and flow. Uh, we have integrated the manifolds and quick disconnects into the OCP rack and using as much as possible open specs. And then CDUs will be built directly into this OCP rack and use the integrated bus bar and 21 inch form factor. So we, it's a, this is a very good example of how we wanna take OCP specs, use it to scale the architecture for multi-vendors and integrate liquid cooling directly into it as we continue to innovate and go forward. So what does this look like? We have big deployments with customers. You know, we can't talk about a lot of them publicly, but we are focused on being able to build not just to act, but a whole scalable unit. Scalable unit has about, you know, 500 plus GPUs, networking switches, all the optics, all the cabling, everything integrated, tested, including the GPUs. 
And now we're in a stage where we deploy these scalable units at scale, tested, integrated, out there with liquid cooling. And we also use solutions like heat exchangers. And we support both, um, I want to say, ARM CPU as well as x86 with high scale density in the same architecture. More and more people are saying, give me scalable units. Don't give me just a server or the whole L11, but we would like to get scalable units as fast as possible. We need it deployed at scale. And I think the only way you can do that is to leverage the industry innovation, use OCP specs to scale, get more density, faster deployments as you go. So that was AI. The other thing I want to talk about here is that today we're also announcing a compute only uh, one OU. It's, we call it M7725. It's based on OCP or V3. So this is a compute only OCP or V3 uh, one OU. It has two times two sockets of Turin up to 192 cores, 500 watt each. So this is significant compute and we would be able to deploy that at scale as well. So why, why did we do this? Not only it's needed for some of the big HPC applications, but also as people start to build these uh, large scale data centers with high power density and liquid cooling, the next phase in customer discussions is to say, when can I consolidate my compute? How can I move my compute to the same architecture? I don't want to have a new data center for AI and an old data center for compute. And so the whole world is moving more and more towards these high density, liquid cooled uh, data centers. And we want to use OCP specs where possible to advance that innovation and give people the ability to deploy at scale. So this is my last slide. We are deploying this stuff at scale and we're gonna continue and we have significant amount of innovation coming up next year. We're gonna go to much higher density, more GPU options, your Soja GP200, there's a lot more than that that we'll continue to announce. And we're integrating liquid cooling as well as power density and looking forward to working with all the OCP community on that and supporting our key customers. That, that's the extent of what I wanted to talk about. I'm happy to take a couple of questions or we can, uh, I don't want to be between you and what's coming next. Any questions, anybody? If not, it's really okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we, we work with a lot of partners on emerging cooling. For some application, that's the right thing. For You can get uh, specific densities, specific temperature ranges. Um, so the way we see it is, it is more application specific for specific deployments. We have five, six partners who do that, that we work with, and we will support that with these partners when customers want it. Uh, this is available now. We're starting to, we have deployed some of those acts already with multiple customers, and we're launching it with GB200, which is available now, starting at large scale deployment in first quarter, but we're going to be shipping some of those this year. So effectively, for most people, it's happening now. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thank you.